Let's take a look at the great American poet Walt Whitman, particularly his poem, When I Heard the Learned Astronomer. We'll start by reading it and then jump into a couple of themes. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures, were ranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I was sitting heard the astronomer, where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick, till rising and gliding out I wandered off by myself in the mystical moist night air, and from time to time looked up in perfect silence at the stars. So, okay, the biggest thing about this poem is the contrast that we have between the effect of, you could call it formal education, and you could call it poetic education, or experiential education, or experiencing something. So, going and listening to an astronomer talk, what sort of effect does that have? Well, he became tired and sick as opposed to experiencing the stars himself in a mystical way. Yeah, that's the cure. That's the cure to his sickness. So the question then becomes, is this really about education? Is this about the, the problem is sitting in a classroom? Well, maybe, maybe. Um, but uh, another way that you could potentially think about it is that this is about trying to reduce the unknowable to the knowable. So like, it's interesting, we're not talking about geometry here. We're not talking about um, engineering. We're talking about astronomy. Stars are fundamentally unknowable in that they are millions and millions of miles off. And in some ways, we can only encounter them with our mind. We can only encounter them mystically. And so there are certain things, perhaps, according to Whitman, that are lost when we try to strip away the mystery, right? It should be noted that he lectured with much applause. So this is a celebrated lecturer. This is someone who is, is good at his job and is celebrated by society. But... It seems to the poet, at least, that there's something lost. And it, it's not until he rises and glides out. Rising and gliding, two verbs traditionally associated with flying. So in a way, you have to leave the earth behind to encounter the stars. You have to fly away. And there's something about choosing to rise and glide away from the mathematical understanding, the technical understanding, the textbook understanding uh, in order to encounter real beauty. So I don't think that this is necessarily a, about tearing down classical education or tearing down traditional education, tearing down proofs and figures, you could say. But it is it, something to say that if you only understand from a textbook that may be limited, and there may be some level of experience necessary for understanding, for, for proper understanding, if you want to look up in perfect silence, you have to stop talking. So you have to stop sort of trying to understand, trying to capture, trying even to teach, and merely be. Perhaps that's why he's by himself, as opposed to in a lecture hall with hundreds of other people. And you would presume that the learned astronomer has even already done that, that he went off by himself to look at the stars, and now he's presenting his findings. So again, this isn't about oh, the astronomer has made some mistake or there's no place for education. But maybe that education in the classical sense, in the classroom sense, isn't the 
only way to encounter something. And in fact, we encounter something perhaps less than encountering the beauty and truth and goodness directly.